Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's join our voices in spirit in giving glory to God. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they had turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. 
for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked on a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. I heard this story about well, it was over 50 years ago, never forgotten it. And the gospel that we just shared seems to be the same story with a little different turn. The story is about a group of American GIs after the end of World War II, and they were still stationed in Europe, and they were helping to rebuild communities. And one of the things some of them did was to help put a church back together that had been badly damaged. And they really did a great job to help the community. They had some machinery that was very helpful. They got down to the details and they were putting together the statues as best they could. And you're familiar with the statue of the Sacred Heart, I'm sure. A picture of Jesus with an exposed heart and his hands are out like this. And they couldn't find the hands any place at all. And they didn't feel they were able to really make them and didn't know what to do. And one of them said, I've got an idea. And he took a piece of paper and wrote on it, I have no hands but yours, and put it at the base of the statue. Jesus, in the gospel today, he called his disciples. He gave to them the privilege and also the obligation to spread the gospel. He put it in their hands. He started it all making us part of the redemptive story, not only our own story, but the story of all of us together. And the reality is today, as it always has been, I have no hands but yours. You and I are given that obligation, but more importantly, the privilege of spreading the gospel on how we live. Let's stand. Mindful of the kindness and compassion of God, we now offer our prayers. This weekend, let us celebrate with all faith the love of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the authority of Jesus celebrate the freedom of God's grace in our lives and in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
As President Biden and Vice President Harris begin their term to lead us, may our faith encompass our trust in God as a way to love one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, may they know of our care and concern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially John Ormy, Josh Looney, Mike Swords, and Peter Daly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Nancy Nelipinski and John Bucci, that they may receive the joy of everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Brown, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, let the words of our prayers and the thoughts of our hearts find favor in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. We ask this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation. And so, in company with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, the clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Will you come and follow me?